This is an 1833 uh, bust half dog rated MS62 by NGC. And as you can tell, the coin is just, I mean, it, granted it has been dipped, but it is stunning in hand. Uh, are you finding what's kind of been like the what's been happening at the table? A lot of good socializing. You get to talk with a lot of people, down to earth people, real people, about coins and what their interests are in the space. You know, a few questions we ask ourselves in the end is, uh, should we cross the show out? Yeah, how's the show been so far? It's been good. Welcome to the Tennessee State Nismatic Association show. Uh, are you finding what's kind of been like the what's been happening at the table? A lot of good socializing. You get to talk with a lot of people, down to earth people, real people, about coins and what their interests are in the space. Have you uh, have we sold many coins today? Uh, kind of at the at the table, or how how's it been in terms of? It's been pretty good. Sometimes it comes down to a difference in price and what they want, but at the end of the day, we're here to make deals here and there, and also here to stay firm on our price, because we have to make a, a modest profit here and there. What should people do if they're interested in our new, new inventory? Go check out our website. We'll be posting stuff within the next uh, few hours after this show, so check all the time. I mean, that's how you get the best deals. Thank you, Casey. Hey, guys. This is Drew. Uh, just got back from the show. You're going to see a little bit of the show. Um, but I, I showed you guys our first uh, day of stuff here. And here is our second day of stuff. Um, and so what we're going to be talking about in this video is, uh, is your, uh, you know, you going to a show a long distance is you getting a table is it worth it we're breaking down the numbers in this video uh, stay tuned and enjoy the video hey guys just made it back to the light box and day two of the show was phenomenal we found a lot of nice things and we met uh, a nice gentleman that you guys just heard about um, he had a few things that he wanted to sell us, but let's let's start talking a little bit and show you guys some coins before we get into our whiteboard session. Uh, just a few things that jumped out to us on the second day of the coin show. This is an 1833 uh, bust half dollar rated MS62 by NGC, and as you can tell, the coin is just, I mean, it, granted it has been dipped, but it is stunning in hand. There's one dot uh, above the L in Liberty. Um, but overall, it's just the nicest bust half I've seen. I like coins that look like this. I know that people don't like the dipping aspect of the coin. But overall, I'm just very flattered and I enjoy a coin like this. Um, and I hope someone likes this also. Um, it's just something that when I saw it, I just couldn't get my eyes off of it. I had to go back and buy it. And we also bought a few other cool things um, from that gentleman as well that we'll be showing you guys in this video. So uh, enjoy all these noobs. Um, if you guys ever are interested in any of our coins, visit AcousticCollectibles.com. We try to keep stuff on there and get it up as quick as possible. Uh, there are things that are missing sometimes just because of how the quick things sell. But we are working on that. Um, we are going to be uh, working on a text message and email uh, notification soon. So whenever anything new comes out, no matter if the video is out for it or not, you guys will be notified. But this is the next coin that I want to show you guys. And the reason why I'm talking to you guys about uh, commemoratives or this Gettysburg is because um, commemoratives have been very hot right now is what I can tell. Um, 
and the main reason is because uh, it's just I don't know like I don't think I actually it's a, a, a specific reason but this Gettysburg uh, the reason why I bought it is because I have many uh, collectors that are trying to collect all 50 um, I think it's, there's at least 50 um, but many of them say you know what they're affordable um, they're a monthly plan I can get on um, and they're easily attainable um, you know, most of these commemoratives, this one's actually a $550 commemorative, so it's not a good example. But mainly, a lot of the lower-end commemorative, commemoratives are easy to get. Uh, people, uh, like I said, on my client list, they said, let me start uh, using, you know, finding you, using you to uh, pay and buy commemoratives each month. Um, so a coin like this is what they're what someone's referring to. They're like, hey, Drew, I have 12 months in the year. I can only afford $150, $250 a month. Uh, to buy a coin and I want to buy a really nice commemorative because a lot of these are easy to find um, but they're not uh, you know as PQ as many people uh, notice uh, I, and as you can see by the these coins I'm buying a lot of nice uh, blast white coins if I found one that's really nicely toned which is hard to find um, I'd be offering that one also but most of the time I find ones that are very uh, beautiful like this I try to find a blast white or the beautifully toned. The ugly toned commemoratives come in the bulk loads of them, and I just don't touch those at all because um, you can't. It's just so hard to sell an ugly coin. But these two are very nice, and like I said, you guys should start following commemoratives. They're going up in value, and people are jumping on their bandwagon. They're starting to get some steam. So, if you guys don't know, we just hit a thousand subscribers. Uh, and basically this has been a goal, uh, for me for over six years. So I've, I'm going to show you guys a screenshot of exactly what my channel looked like back then. It's still around, has 25 subscribers, but, um, I guess the moral of the story or the, well, you know, it's just a chase what you like, chase what you, what you're passionate about, um, and keep working at it until you get what you want. Um, we actually, my mom told me this year uh, to write down some goals that I had, um, and so I wrote down I wanted to get a thousand subscribers on YouTube. And for the first few months, or almost all this year, I haven't really done anything with YouTube, um, but I really love coins, so I wanted to incorporate that um, into my passion for making videos and editing. And you guys really liked them, so. Uh, Thank you guys for all your support. Um, this is just the beginning. Here's a coin that I've never purchased before. Um, I think I've only had a few half dimes, but none, none not as nice as this. This is an 1854 half dime, uh, graded Mint State 63 by PCGS, and it has arrows on it. And as you can tell, this coin hasn't been dipped. Um, it, it's very you know, mark free, uh, a little bit in the right and left fields. Uh, luster is starting to fleet on the coin, but as you can tell, I mean, it's just such a beautiful original piece. Uh, and my favorite part about the coin is the reverse. The reverse of the coin is, I mean, <laughs> it holds up the coin in my opinion, just because of the detail to it. Um, and also the remaining luster as well. And the coin overall is very nice. Um, and I don't know, when I spend money like this, I mean, this is actually a cheap coin. Um, for a, a dealer like myself, I only spent $275 on this coin, which is actually super affordable because, I mean, try to find something this nice from 1854, and in this caliber and grade, it's just not going to be, um, you know, what what I would say is is easy to find. And so I put this on the website, and it sold to one of my type guys very quickly. Um, so. Yeah, watch out for stuff like this. Uh, I know. I think when I purchased this coin, only a few sold. Like the last one that sold was in 2019 at an auction house. So uh, I buy the, bought this coin because it is a, a rare coin. Here's a coin you guys have seen a lot from me lately. This is a 1942 over one uh, Mercury dime, and the reason why I like to buy these is because uh, you know main, to fill in people's last kind of uh, coin for their sets. Um, and it's just a uh, it's a screamer coin. I don't buy 42 over 1 D's. We were actually at the show and someone was asking about one. I just don't do that because 42 over 1 D's are very hard to spot. Um, you know, it's not screaming at you like like this overdate is here. Um, this one almost looks like an R, 
with a one and the two almost looks like an R, and that's kind of what draws me to this coin. And I was actually offered this coin at Gray Sheet, which is something that it doesn't happen too often for a rare bird like this. And I am very thankful for that opportunity. Let's jump into the whiteboard session on whether a table is worth your time. Hey guys, this is Drew. Uh, welcome back to another whiteboard session. And this session we'll be talking about uh, Tennessee uh, show day two. Uh, was the trip worth it? That's our question for today. Um, we're trying to give you guys in these whiteboard sessions just real raw data that we're using to uh, determine should we go back to a show? Should we go to the show again? Um, should we make it an effort to uh, take, uh, take time out of our, our, our months uh, to go to certain shows? And uh, dealers have been pretty good about uh, finding what shows have been good for them and what shows haven't. So let's just break down the numbers with you guys raw and show you guys everything that, that we calculated so far. And so uh, a few things about the show that I wanted to take account of. Uh, we met a lot of great people there. Uh, Mr. You know, there, was, there was a lot of few guys, uh, a few Christian guys there, a few seasoned collectors that really uh, had interest in the hobby. And those type of people really make the trip worth, us, worth, worth it to us. Uh, not from a financial perspective, but from more of a relationship perspective. Uh, we got some fresh inventory too. We uh, bought a, you know, a 1909 SVDB, bought a really nice cat bus half, um, bought a nice double dot at the show. We ended up selling at the show. Just some things we don't really find uh, with vest pocket dealers around here too often. Um, and so uh, the experience also was pretty good just because we bought a table. We don't buy a table too often. Uh, but when we do, there's always something unique that happens. Someone comes up to us, uh, offers us nice inventory, or likes to take a look at our stuff. You know, we try to find stuff that's affordable, but also uh, very eye appealing to uh, most collectors. Um, a few downsides of the show was uh, it was a state show, so we're not we don't we didn't see as many big collectors there. Uh, most of the time, you're either at a buying show or you're at a selling show. Um, some sh shows are great for selling and some shows are great for buying. And when a lot of the bigger dealers don't show up, um, that, can that can become a little bit um, of an issue for you uh, when you're going to um, a show like this. So that's kind of what was a downside for us. And it was a little bit slower of foot traffic. Um, it was a busy for, it was busy kind of spotty here and there on Friday, um, but nothing to scream home about. Um, but let's talk a little bit about the raw numbers of how much time we spent. So we traveled about 1,800 miles uh, round trip, uh, spent about 30 hours in the car. Uh, there's a lot of wear and tear on the car that we have to take account for just for accounting purposes. And then we were away for four days. And, and people are like, you know, oh, you're away for four days. Why are you complaining this and that? It's like, um, you know, you can, at home, you can do a lot more things. You can edit, you can uh, start to talk to a lot of more local people. Uh, you can plan out uh, the next few episodes like this, like we're doing now. So there's a lot, there is a trade-off with time that you actually have when you're a dealer because there's so many different things that you can be doing at once. Um, but let me show you guys uh, these numbers. But before I do, just understand this is not the same for everybody. Uh, you know, we've only been dealers for, you know, since the start of the pandemic. So this is not the same for everybody. Um, you know, if you guys go to the show, end up doing really well at the show, end up finding the right deals of the show, that's great for you. We're just giving you our perspective. So this is not a for or against for you uh, to go to a show. This is just us being real with our numbers, us being real with uh, what we're good at buying and what we're not good at buying. Um, so the sales uh, from, from this show is $9,613. Our total expenses was $829.96. Uh, our current profit is $321.44, and our estimated profit, based on the $9,000 of inventory purchased, is around $1,000 to $1,500. Uh, sometimes um, it's a little bit hard to gauge uh, how much money we would make because some things just don't sell right away. Some things take a month or two to sell. Um, and so 
when this is all combinated together, you know, if we make a thousand, fifteen hundred bucks in four days, um, that's generally a good thing. Um, but like I said, uh, we're, we're starting to ask ourselves, is there a trade-off? Is there something that we could be doing at home? Um, is there a way that we can be spending our time more wisely? Um, and so, you know, a few questions we ask ourselves in the end is, uh, should we cross the show out? Uh, should we have gone to Baltimore or a little bit more of a higher echelon show, just based on what we like to sell to people? And what do we need to improve on? Um, you know, there's, there might have been a lot of nicer stuff at the Tennessee show, uh, but we don't really, we didn't really have an eye for it, didn't have the knowledge for it, maybe didn't have the customers for it. So that's all the things that we have to ask ourselves. And I hope you guys uh, enjoy this whiteboard session. Kind of use this uh, as a gauge for yourself when you're going to shows, uh, especially when you're uh, trying to be an aspiring coin dealer like us. But uh, enjoy, have a, enjoy, the, uh, enjoy the rest of the video. We hope you guys enjoyed that last whiteboard session. Let's jump back into some other nice coins. This is a 1944S uh, Mercury Dime graded MS67 by PCGS. Um, it has been CAC approved and it is in a nice fatty holder. And when you get the coin under a light, um, even in it with this kind of uh, submerged holder, um, you can really see the nice gold and crusty toning that uh, nice original Mercs have. Now it has this nice green uh, toning also where the date is, which I really enjoyed. Well, that's why I purchased the coin. Um, and when you're buying a coin uh, that's more common, like this this one, um, the reason why I, I purchased it and it actually sold very quickly is because it has a nice holder that's collectible. It has nice, you know, ice, nice eye appeal. It has a CAC sticker. It has toning. And, I mean, I think this coin all day long could be a 67+. plus. Um, and that's something that someone uh, would enjoy for their collection. Um, and so, like I said, when you're buying something that's more common, we've seen a few common coins here, um, buy something that sticks out, buy something that someone would say, wow, this is one of my staples of my collection. Um, we do buy more common stuff sometimes because it is offered to us at a great price, but when you're hunting for something special, make sure you buy something special just like this coin here. We were fortunate enough to be offered a lot of things at the show. Uh, this is an 1883-0 Morgan Dollar graded MS63 by NGC. And the reason why I picked up this coin is because it has some nice toning underneath uh, the chin here, which I like this green and red. And it's also you know, going onto its face. Um, there is some lackluster about the coin. Um, the reverse is very nice. Um, it has some nice crusty or uh, you know rim toning to it. Um, stuff like this I enjoy because, you know, like I was telling you guys, it is a common coin, but it does have uh, a uniqueness to it, which will draw some people to uh, you as a dealer because you know what they're looking for. You know that they're not trying to buy, um, you know, an average Blast White 1883-0. They want something with a little flair, and I think this one provides that uh, for someone out there. Here's two uh, unique coins we bought. These are uh, 1885 and 1884 Binion uh, collection coins. Um, they were actually sent in a bulk submission to NGC and they received a net grade of Brilliant Uncirculated. Most of the time when they're sent into like a bulk batch, um, they, they, are, they can be recommended as net grades, which means that they can uh, you know, put BU or AU or XF, um, whatever you want, um, on the coin instead of having a numerical grade and I think that's actually cheaper when you uh, when you do that but um, I like the pedigree um, I like the holders they're actually very collectible and so uh, stuff like this uh, gives us a little bit um, of that dynamics dynamics to it even though they're pretty common dates a little bit beat up they still have uh, some neat history about them and I overall um, just like these ins and outs, small little things uh, for the shop. Um, I hope you guys do too. Um, we actually have been doing a lot of great business um, on our store, and I want to thank you guys for that so much because uh, we we didn't th we never we never knew uh, the power of a great community like you guys to uh, help us you know sell inventory, um, sell great coins to you guys. We didn't think this was possible, and we are so thankful. Um, you guys have really blown us away and inspired us to do more, um, and we're going to continue to do that. 
Um, this is a 1942 uh, Walking Liberty half dollar. Uh, I bought this one because I enjoyed the luster of the coin. I enjoyed uh, that the coin looked very nice for a 65. Um, it had very minimal marks. Um, it has a little bit of toning to it, which I didn't didn't like too much. But when you're at a coin show and it's offered for a decent price, um, and it, sometimes it's good to create that network too. You know, uh, you go over to a, a dealer and they say, "Hey, you know, look at my stuff. What do you want? You know, be happy to help you." Uh, for me, that just draws me in and say, I want to spend some money, doesn't matter what I buy. And uh, walking liberty like this is common, um, but uh, I, I just I think it has nice eye appeal. It's going to fit in someone's collection. Walking liberty half dollars have been going up this past year in demand. And, uh, you know, when I get it for, like I said, for a decent price, helped out a dealer that uh, was trying to make, make it worth it to go to the show. Uh, we worked together and uh, worked, and I bought this beautiful coin. This is an 1878 Seven Tail Feather Morgan Dollar Grade AU53 by PCGS. I don't think I think this coin has a shot at gold cac. I don't think it has been sent before, um, but I offered it to the public early and someone picked it up. It's a pretty decent coin um, for its grade. Uh, I think that this coin has been undergraded, but. Back then, like I said, they didn't have the perspective that they do now of how many, you know, how Morgans are and how the grading system really has changed over these past few years. Um, and like I said, the main reason why I bought this coin is because it has all this chaos up here. You know, 1878, seven tail feather, and like, and then they go, where do I put the rest of this? Reverse of 78 down here. Um, and so. I, mean, I, I like the coin. I think it's something that uh, you know a lot of a lot of collectors try to find rattlers for their collection. And I actually sold this to a dealer that likes to see if undergraded coins are there um, for them uh, to buy. And I think this one is that example. So I hope this one treats uh, this dealer well when I send it to him. A few more things to uh, take a look at today. This is. At 1904 Morgan Dollar, graded MS64 by PCGS. Uh, it has a beautiful rim toning to it. I like the gold that it has as well, the gold hue. Um, uh, it has a few fingerprints on it, which is a downside. But, like, I mean, I just really like the, the character it has. Sometimes when you're buying a coin, it doesn't speak to everybody, but it does speak to you. And you just got to find the person that it ends up speaking to so you can give it to them for their collection. Um... I just think that this coin has enough character uh, for a Tone Morgan to, uh, you know, for for me as someone that likes to offer Tone coins, and just look at that the mint mark right there when you put it under light. It's just it's a it's a wow coin. Um, also has a nice OGH uh, to partner with it. Now this coin is a head scratcher to me. Uh, I want to get your guys' opinions. This is an 1886 Morgan Dollar Grade MS64. And when I put in the light, I mean, does it look proof like to you? Does it look I mean, I don't I don't know what to think about this coin. It looks proof like to me. Um, and the rest of the main reason why I bought it. It's very uh, premium quality in terms of its luster, um, its eye appeal. Um, and that, like I said, you want to find that dynamics in, in anything that you buy. I think this coin did it for me. Um, it has that just it just looks like a proof like coin and I can almost market it by saying just look how nice the fields are Look how deep the mirrors are. What do you guys think of it? Um, you know, I think that 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 in itself gives people um, a, a little bit more of an assurance that they're buying a wonderful piece of history um, But let me know what you guys think below um, this coin is an interesting one Up next, uh, we've been talking about Key 8 Dimes, and I actually bought this coin at the show. Um, it's a 1916D uh, Mercury Dime. Uh, this one, it's, this sucker has been bent, as you can see. It's just, it almost, you know, it almost looks like it's, I mean, just just look at that, that bent, bent to it. I don't know what someone did with it. I don't know if it got stuck in a machine or what, but I got this for a good price. Um, I actually work with key date sometimes with details grades because that's just how it works um you know someone wants to buy a nice key date for their collection but they don't want to spend a thousand dollars which some people are asking for for ag3s right now something like this would sell for 500 bucks five five twenty five um 
I actually sold a double die while at the show. I bought one at the show, uh, and I sold it at the show. It was a double die 1955, a Lincoln cent. Um, and the guy that bought it said, yeah, we normally buy, like, you know, problem-free coins, but, like, you know, a 1955 is a 1955 double die. Like, I have to buy this coin. There's no way around it. And so that's kind of the way with uh, 16Ds as well. Um, people need these for their collections. The last coin I wanted to show you guys in today's video is a 1964 uh, Proof Jefferson. And the reason why I wanted to send it, show this to you guys is because it has some pretty cool cello toning to it. And basically what happened is the Mint sent out a bunch of proof sets in, um, in plastic wrapping. You guys have probably seen that many times. Um, and coins like this ended up toning inside of them. And what was beautiful about this coin is that, I don't know, I just like the character that it has. I like the toning that it has. Um, and I think that someone that collects Jefferson will also share that same, uh, same enjoyment as I do. Um, Jefferson's for me is a really dark area or something that I just don't understand. Um, but um, I want to start to move into it more, start to get more balance with it. And I think this coin, it, you know, will start to get my eyes open to uh, the Jefferson series and uh, help me do a deep dive and end up finding more clients for it. So hope you guys enjoyed this part of the video. Let's move it to the outro. Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you did, enjoy our video, please leave a like. It supports our dream. You want to comment your thoughts? We like your thoughts. What do you think about the coins? What do you think about what we had to say? And subscribe. you got to join the community. We're just, I mean, we're the best ones on here, let's be honest. And why do you want to subscribe? You don't want to miss an episode. I mean, we got great coins coming out, great information as a dealer coming out, um, and giveaways pretty soon. So, uh, like I said, do all those things, and we'll see you in the next episode.